A tragedy 75 years ago this week marked the birth of what has become breaking news on television, and it happened right here on KTLA 5. It involved the attempted rescue of three year old Kathy Fiscus. On April 8th, 1949, Fiscus fell into an abandoned well near her family's home in San Marino. The team here on Channel 5 covered the attempted rescue live for 27 straight hours on air. KTLA's Micah Ullman reports on how the coverage transformed television news. It was a story that was covered by radio stations and newspapers around the world, but in 1949, television was still a novelty. The attempted rescue of Kathy Fiscus would change that. It brought to bear a collective experience the likes of which the world had never seen, and it would transform television news along the way. People cried, people held hands, people prayed, people slept on the lawns nearby, people climbed the oak trees to look at the rescue attempt. April 8th, 1949, San Marino. Three-year-old Kathy Fiscus, playing in the backyard of her family's home, suddenly vanishes from her mother's view. She had fallen into an abandoned well just 14 inches in diameter. She falls 90 feet. The well itself actually snakes into the earth far deeper than that, but she's stuck at about nine stories down, obviously terrified. First responders arriving at the scene could hear Kathy's cries for help. Her voice described as that of a child shut in a dark closet, but the initial rescue efforts failed. Other plans are launched, which include digging basically side by side holes in the earth next to her well, and the hope is that perhaps they can reach down to as far down as she is and tunnel across, open up the well casing where she is and get her out. Thousands of people gathered at the scene as the rescue effort continued through the night. And KTLA's general manager, Klaus Landsberg, knew this was a chance for KTLA to make history and cover the story live. Uh, there's a notion that perhaps remote television broadcasting can work. And it's an, it's an experiment. Um, a lot of people think it won't work. But Landsberg and his team of KTLA engineers managed to establish a live signal from the scene. And just over 24 hours into the rescue operation, KTLA was on the air. Author and former KTLA anchor Terry Enzur. This would be the first time that people could just gather in front of a television set and see images of breaking news as it was happening. In San Marino, California. What would turn out to be 27 hours of continuous live coverage fell on the shoulders of announcer Bill Welsh and the young KTLA reporter Stan Chambers. We watched men go down and uh, come up and uh, buckets of dirt and sand come up and all of the rescue attempts being made. Stan Chambers pioneering the television coverage of breaking news on the fly. He wasn't really sure what to do. He roamed around the site trying to get interviews and he had quite a story to tell. As the rescue effort entered its second day, Kathy's parents tried desperately to remain positive and the city had been brought to a standstill. The few businesses with televisions stayed open all night. People would gather in front of televisions wherever they could find them, in front of a department store, or if a neighbor had a television set, they would go there and they would camp out on the floor to find out what would happen to little Kathy. Just over 48 hours after the rescue effort began, the grim news that Kathy Fiscus had not survived, a heart-wrenching story for the Fiscus family, and for the first time, a family tragedy unfolding before a live television audience. There were only about 20,000 television sets in use at the time of the Kathy Fiscus tragedy. In one weekend after the Kathy Fiscus telecast, 100,000 television sets were sold, and a year later there were 300,000 television sets in Los Angeles. Ushered in by the first ever live television breaking news coverage, bringing into focus the vivid reality of what was possible and the arrival of television's new frontier. Micah Ullman, KTLA News.